Hello folks, can you hear me okay because I've not got my usual mic set up so hopefully you can but welcome to my very first live stream Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth So good to see so many of you here today, it's wonderful to have you and just to clarify, yes Square Enix did give me a copy of the game I've been playing it actually for about a week and they have given me permission to stream it today a day before release however there are some limitations let me just go over those quickly so you know what to expect first off they have told me I'm not allowed to stream certain aspects of the story mostly I'm not allowed to stream the actual introduction to the game so the first five minutes after that you do get exactly what you got in the rebirth demo which is the flashback to Nibelheim so I'm going to skip that as well since many of you have seen that there is another 10 to 15 minutes of that flashback that isn't in the demo. But again, for spoiler reasons, I'm not going to be showing that. So we're going to be starting our stream today in Chapter 1, still, but after the flashback sequence. So the party are just in calm and are ready to move out. Uh, just in case you wondered if you'd missed anything you haven't, that's part of Square's 
instructions, I guess, rules, regulations, in order for me to be allowed to stream today. And that's to protect you guys, so that when you play tomorrow, you will be able to go in fresh, without those spoilers. Just be aware that other YouTubers may decide to break those embargoes, so just be careful if you are going to be watching other streams. But here I am trying to be very cautious and aware of the fact that you guys are not going to want those story spoilers today. There will be some story, I'm not going to be able to avoid that as we make our way through, but especially the opening of the game, I am not going to be playing. I'm also only allowed to stream for four hours maximum today. Now, four hours is quite a lot for me, but I do want to try and push it. So what I'm going to do is go for a two-hour stream today, now, and then this evening, I'm going to try and stream another two hours. So we get our four hours, um, but hopefully with a break in between. Um, anything else I wanted to say? Yeah, I've got the Streamlabs chatbot in place. I've got it set to minimum. But apologies if your messages do get deleted unnecessarily. That's simply because I am expecting a few more people to visit the chat today. And unfortunately, whenever that happens, we do tend to get spammers. And it's just going to be a lot easier for me to have that chatbot in place. So a necessary evil. It won't be for every stream. When things calm down a bit, I'll disable it. But for today, I'm just going to have that in place there. Um, it's great to see you guys. I've been playing the game now for about 10 hours. Just a few brief words. We've got a minute or two before stream starts. I could have played a lot longer, but I was conscious of the fact that I actually want to experience it with all of you. I didn't want to go racing ahead too far and then have to start again and go through the entire experience having no, you know, knowing everything that's going to happen. I wanted to have that experience with all of you on stream. So I've played for about 10 hours up to chapter 4, which is the June on stuff you've also seen in the demo. Um, but obviously now I'm just going to go ham with it. We're starting the game again from just after the flashback in chapter 1, and we are going to be pushing through to the end over the coming weeks and experiencing the whole lot together as a community. So folks, I am really excited for this. Okay, one thing I do want to mention, for those of you that have played Remake, there is a ton of side quest content in this game. I mean, there's more side quests in this game than in any Final Fantasy game I've played. The good thing is, unlike Remake, you can, once you've unlocked the various side quests and side content, do it at any point from when it unlocks to the end of the game. You're not limited to doing it in the specific chapters that you get it in. So that is one change I do like. Yes, I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you all. Yep, so just to clarify, story spoilers should be at a minimum today. But I hope we all have a good time here. So we've just turned half past two, which is stream start time. So here we go then, guys. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We've waited four years. Let's get on with the show. Okay, just make sure that I can uh, see and hear everything. Yep, this is the full game. I was worried there was no game sound, but that's actually just because of the fact that there is no sound in this area. What I'm going to do, guys, is actually disable that chatbot because I've got it set to the minimum settings and I can already see that it's going to be really annoying. Just bear with me one moment. I'll get that turned off. I don't want it on. It's just going to interfere. And I'll try and stay on top of deleting any troll messages or spam or things like that that we do tend to get when I am live streaming a brand new game such as this. Yeah, that chat la uh, chatbot, was uh, that was the official Streamlabs chatbot. It was on minimum settings. I couldn't reduce it any more than that, which was annoying. Okay, right. Let me just check. Volume levels are all good. They should be because I did go through it all before the start of the stream. Yes. Okay. So here we are right now. We've just finished the flashback. By the way, let me know in chat if you have done or played through the Nibelheim flashback in the FF7 Rebirth demo. Let me know in chat if you've done that. 
because that will just help with understanding a little bit of context as to what's going on here. I have skipped that part since I've already played through the demo on the channel that's already up and we're taking over from the end of that, okay? So from the end of the story that Cloud has shared. One thing I would say is there is about 10 to 15 minutes that you guys haven't seen of the flashback story that occurs after the end of the demo. But again, I don't want to spoil that for you. So that's why I've just skipped that as well. Oh, I've not seen that, Red. I've been so busy the last week. Yeah, I've not seen. Sorry, did I wake you? So we are now in calm. What's going on? Oh, uh, it's nothing, really. There's just something I need to ask you. So, can we talk? Sure. Great, but not here. Follow me. Okay, Shane. Yep, no, that's good. That gives you the context, at least. You know that I killed her. So, who is she? Or rather, what is she? I'll tell you what, I absolutely love the presentation of the cutscenes in Rebirth. Again, I've only played the first four chapters myself, but from what I have seen about them and from them, they are just spectacular. They really are. Yeah, don't blame you, Ryan. By the way, guys, you've probably seen bits of the card game. We'll be playing that soon as well. Do you think Midgar is over there? Anyway. There's something I need to ask you too. I've turned the game up a little bit. Five years ago, at the reactor, I saw you lying there. Saw your wound and all the blood. I figured it was too late. Yeah? Oh, that'd be awesome, Doc. A bit of a late one for you. Some kind of imposter? <sighs> Can't believe I'm having this conversation with you, but here we are. <laughs> here, look. My scar, that proof enough? After you left, Zangon found me. He's the one who brought me to the clinic. He risked his life carrying me out of the reactor and down the river. Wasn't just him though. There's the doctor who operated on me all night and the nurses who looked after me for days on end. I'm here now because they were there for me then. And where were you again? In fact, where have you been this whole time? For five years. You know I can't tell you that. Of course you can't. Sorry, I just need some space. Okay, so this is our first look at the town of Calm. I've got to say, it's been so expanded upon from the original Final Fantasy VII, hasn't it? It's almost unrecognisable, but a lot of the infrastructure and designs are very similar. It is just a lot more in terms of expanded. But yeah, I'm loving that. You're going to find that that's pretty much the case with many of the regions in this game. Yeah, have you folks played Final Fantasy VII Remake recently, either... A repeat playthrough from one that you did earlier on or perhaps for the first time in preparation for rebirth i see a couple of people have said that they have in chat i thought we could just pick up where we left off like nothing had changed 
But I guess I was wrong. Guess so. I was so happy to see you again, but maybe I shouldn't have been. Yeah, don't worry guys, we're going to be having a look at the card game. It does actually get introduced to us here in Khan before we leave over to the, you know, I, I want to say world map. Can we still call it a world map? Even though I suppose it's a little bit different here in Rebirth. But yeah, in context of Final Fantasy card games, I wouldn't say it's as fast paced or quite as addictive as the Final Fantasy VIII Triple Triad game. But it is leagues ahead of Final Fantasy IX. So don't worry about that. It is a lot more fun than Final Fantasy IX's card game. And I have been enjoying it. You two fight? No. We have enough problems as it is. Copy? Tomorrow is another day. And that's the end of chapter one. So chapter one is really just a flashback sequence. But I do want to mention there is a five to ten minute introduction before the flashback. Which I have not shown you on stream today. I do not want to spoil. But you guys are going to love it. If you are fans of the original FF7, I cannot believe where Square went with that. It is incredible. It's only for five minutes. But yeah, I'm not saying any more than that. You've got to, got to experience that for yourself. So I can see why Square told me not to live stream that first part of the game. Yeah, a lot of you excited for midnight, it seems, in chat. Or for those of you getting delivery of the physical edition tomorrow. What's this? A gift from our humble establishment. Though it may not look like much, it should help you to break the ice with those you meet. Queen's blood? Yeah, so the release of the game, if you've purchased the digital version, is midnight in whatever region you live in, as far as I'm aware. So for the UK, that's still about uh, nine hours away, is it? Um, something like that. And obviously, depending on your region, it might be a little bit different and your time zone. But here we have our introduction to Queen's Blood. I'm not going to go through all the tutorial stuff if I can avoid it because I have done it already. So I'm going to select no to that and I'm going to show it you in practice. And of course, you can go through the tutorial when playing yourself. Well, when playing against other people, but like, you know, not watching the stream. So let's go ahead now and head outside. But before we do, I think there might have been a treasure chest. Unless I'm misremembering. Yeah, for those, I've seen a few people asking. I do have permission from Square to live stream four hours of the game today. So thank you to Square as well for giving me a code so that I could do so. No, I don't think there's any chests, so let's head down. I love the fact that you get these little news reports and that as you play through Rebirth as well on the various radios and what have you. So let's start by speaking to the innkeeper here. I must apologize for not introducing myself to you earlier. I'm Broden, the owner of this inn. Your companions have all stepped out. Oh, but Barrett left a message he wanted me to pass along to you. You missed roll call, soldier boy. Luckily, you're on leave for the day. Don't waste it, though. Get your equipment checked ASAP. Sound advice? Yes, so the game does give us a couple of things that we can do at this point. Good idea. By the way, Cloud, do you have any folios on you? Yeah. In that case, you might also want to pay a visit to Magnata Books. They have stores all over, but the first official one was built here in Calm. And their resident scholars are remarkably talented. 
If you want to unlock the true potential of your folios, you should go see them. The first customization is always free. I mean, I picked up a PS5 for Final Fantasy VII Remake, Robert. So, as somebody who is a huge fan of FF7, yeah, I kind of couldn't not play it. So, for me, I would say, yes, it is. Yeah, see you later, DSR. Yeah, if you are new to the channel, then please do consider subscribing. I'm going to be live streaming the heck out of this game over the coming weeks. And as I mentioned, there is a load of side quest content so that if you want to do everything, <laughs> then even a single playthrough, you're going to be looking at about 90 hours to get everything done. So yeah, it's going to be keeping us busy for a while. And here we are, in calm, with full free reign. So our party members are scattered around. We can speak to them and increase our relationship status with them by selecting various responses. If I open up the main map here, you can see the main scenario is highlighted in blue. And in fact, there's a few things we need to do for the main scenario quest right now, which is just introducing us to various elements of gameplay. Now these here, the shielded numbers, number one and number one, these are the card game opponents. So we're going to go and have a dabble with those. The number, I believe, is their level of difficulty. So as I was progressing through on my first playthrough, again I've only played 10 hours, so I'm not an expert by any stretch, but as I was entering new areas, you know, players were like numbers two and three. So right here in Calm, they are, of course, only level one. So let's do that first, shall we? I know some of you guys are really interested in the card game, which is called Queen's Blood. So we'll give it a go, and then we will start progressing through some of the other scenario bits. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Sean Owens asks, what levels do your characters start at? They start at level 15. Okay, if you've got any questions, by the way, guys, please ask them in chat and I'll do my best to answer them if I see them. We just don't know how long it's going to be for a PC release, Taco, unfortunately. Okay, that's the starting equipment. Red 13, as you folks probably already know, is a playable character right from the beginning here in Rebirth, having only been a guest party member in Remake. There are other forms of progression as well, which we are going to unlock, that were not available in Remake. In particular, the party folio system. But, again, once that's available, we will explore it together. Oh, Red 13. Yeah, you're still having issues with that, aren't you? I just hope you get it sorted, mate, because it's been going on a while for you now. Hello, Lights Lessons. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm just taking a look up at the clock tower here. This is Calm. You remember Calm from Final Fantasy VII? How awesome is this? Flipping amazing, it really is. That's the map for it. Some of it we haven't yet been to, which is why it's greyed out. Okay. So let's have a look at the card game. I did skip the tutorial, so I'm going to try and explain it to you the best that I can. Hi Irvin, yes this is the full game, the full release of Rebirth. Very excited to share this with you. Oh thank you Sage. <laughs> this guy's funny. Okay, so the first I guess side quest, Queen's Blood is a completely optional game, okay, mini game, you don't have to do it at all if you don't like it, but we're going to try and do everything, 
The first side quest for Queen's Blood is to defeat three players. And fortunately, I believe there are three level one players all, all around Calm that we can find. So we can complete this first part here in this town before we move on. Now, I will tell you, it's going to look a little bit confusing to start with. But once you've got the hang of it, the actual mechanics are easy, simple, okay? You are not going to win every game. There are some definite strategies you're going to need to put in place. But the mechanics themselves are fairly easy to grasp once you've got some experience. So to keep things simple, I'm just going to keep this default deck right now. So let's go ahead and begin the match. Okay, so you can see the card, sorry, the card, the game board, okay, that grid, and we're going to be placing cards down and trying to build up points, racking up points for each row. So you can see there are three rows on the board. On the left, the green circle coloured numbers, and on the right, the red circle coloured numbers. That indicates how many points we have compared to our opponent for that row. And we just need to get more points to win the game. So the objective is simple enough. How we get there is going to take a little bit of explaining. I won't explain why right now because I don't want to confuse you. But to start with, we can, before we even play, mulligan any cards that we don't want to start with. And I'm going to mulligan this card. Mulligan simply means replacing it with another from the deck. Because you can see in the upper left of the card, it has two pawns. That means it's going to require a slot to play in that we don't yet have, okay? We will later on in the game, but right now we don't. So I'm going to mulligan this and try and get another one pawn card rather than two. So let's select that one and then we will select play. And that one card will be replaced with another random card. Perfect. And here we go. So this is a turn-based game, obviously. What we are going to do is place one of our cards down on one of the pawns on the left that have the green bobbing heads. Okay, we can only place our cards on the green pawns, and our opponent can only place cards on the red pawns. Now, you can see each card has a grid associated with it. That is how much of the game board it is going to unlock for us. Okay? So, fairly simple, really. I'm going to start by placing the security officer down and I'm going to place it here now you can see what it's going to do when I do that look at its grid on the security officer that cross the white square on that cross is the position of the card itself and then the yellow squares around it are the board slots that it is going to open up for us now the reason why we saw two pawns on the top and the bottom and I placed this is because they already have a single pawn. So by placing this down, it's going to add another onto those spots. If there was no pawns on them, it would just add the one. I apologise if this sounds confusing. I promise you, once you get the hang of it, it is very intuitive. So don't be put off by that. Now, you can see on the board... Okay, he's actually copied my move, the cheeky one. He's played the same card down on his side. So we now have three squares on which we can play cards. Okay, three squares with pawns on. But two of those squares now have two pawns because of the security officer we played. Which means we can now play a two-pawn card, such as this one. If you see in the top left, the Alpha Dunk, top left of its card has two pawns. Means we can place it on one of these slots if we wanted to. We can't, however, place it on this one because there's only one pawn there and it needs two. Now, I'm not going to play that because it doesn't actually bring anything of value to the board for us at the moment. So, we're going to stick with just a single card for now. Uh, a single pawn card. Hello, Soph. And I'm just trying to think which would be best here. We could go for another security officer, place that there. That will give us some more options. One thing, if we do this, you see how it, this will place a green pawn for us right next to his red pawn. He could actually capture that square then. Okay. 
You can capture your opponent's pawn squares if yours are right next to them and you place a card on it. So that might not be the best idea. But then we don't seem to have a huge amount of choice. I could place this. But it doesn't seem to be as effective. So let's just go ahead and place another security officer for now. Yes, he could capture one of our squares. But that's fine. It will serve as an example anyway. He didn't do so, which is really good. It was a stupid thing not to do so. Maybe he didn't have a card. But now we can capture one of his squares. So you can see, if I go over here on the board, we've got this pawn here that we can place a card on. And because we'll be placing it right next to his red pawn, if we can find a piece that would capture this square, then he can never play a card here. His red pawn will be removed. So if we go for the Grasslands Wolf. Okay, just look at the Grasslands Wolf grid. It's got that tiny little like L shape, hasn't it? The white square and then one yellow above and one to the side. If we place that there, it is going to capture his pawn. See how it turns from red to green? You see how that works, guys? It's really, really intuitive once you get the hang of it. He can now no longer place a card anywhere except in the bottom right. So we're getting him nice and trapped here, I've got to say. Now we're about to murder him. Because all I need to do is play a card on the... Play a card here that will capture this red pawn here. So this would do it, wouldn't it? This would do it. This would do it, but I can't play that there because it's only a single pawn at the moment and this requires two. These wouldn't. So these are our choices. It doesn't really matter which one we go for. Let's just go for this. He now cannot do anything else in this game. He's completely locked out from playing. So we have full control of the board. We can now work on building up our score. So you'll see on the left hand side... We have a score of 6 for the middle row because we placed all these cards. And we have 0 on the top and bottom because we have no cards there. Now, he has a score of 4 on the top row because he placed the Alpha Dunk, which is a 4 scoring card. A 1 for the middle row and a 2 for the bottom. So we need to try and overtake those if we can. So, first things first. Let's just whack the Alpha Dunk down at the top. That will at least match our score with his. And now we only need to replace one card up there in order to be beating that. So just like that, we are now winning for the top and the middle. And now we just need to try and beat him on the bottom. Although, I'll tell you how the scores get added up later. It is a little bit not what you'd think. But for now, just try and get the higher scores. Uh, so this is a two scoring card. A one scoring card, two scoring card. Really doesn't matter what we play here. Um, I don't have a three card right now, but that's fine. We don't have to play a three card. Let's just try and play something that's going to give us another square. There we go. And we only need to play one more and we've practically won anyway. Oh, there's a three pawn card, but I won't be able to play that this game. So we'll place that up there. Place this down here. See how I locked him off early on in the game? Couldn't do anything then. Which is why we're destroying him now. Place that down there. And we'll play our only uh, one pawn card. So we beat him on every single row. Whoever wins a row... They are going to get the points for that row, okay? You get zero for a row if you lose it. So even if, for example, so you can see I've got eight points on the top row. He's got four. It won't add up those four points for him because I won. So he will get zero for all three of his rows. You have to win a row for the points to be calculated. I'm just going to pass the turns now to end the match. And it's going to add up all our points. So he gets zero for all three. You only get the points when you win a row. We get 22 for winning all three. And we get a card reward, of course. A crystalline crab. 
That orange square on the grid indicates that it will power up that particular square when you play it. So that's the card game in a nutshell. So if we want to complete that quest, we've got two more to play. Yeah, the card game is called Queen's Blood, and it's quite a major side quest that you can undertake in Rebirth. So if we look at the map now, okay, interestingly, it looks like the card players themselves level up as you play them, maybe. I'm not sure what that number means. I thought it was their level. Maybe it isn't. Okay. Well, we'll speak to Tifa while we're here. Maybe boost our relationship with her. Oh, I should have said the promise I made to boost relationship. No, it will take some time, Fenor, but I promise you it will eventually click and make sense. It was like that for me. <laughs> uh, is Rebirth, Lewis asks, the whole original game from the PS1, but using Remake Engine? No, so Remake was the first part of the original game, if you remember, the section around Midgar, up until the party leaves Midgar. Rebirth is the continuation of the story, so it's, I guess, the next third of the original game. Just as with Remake, it has been fully expanded into a full-length game in and of itself. With the side content, you're looking at about 90 hours of gameplay for a single playthrough. But story-wise, it's from when the party left Midgar in the original game, up to and including the events of the City of the Ancients at the end of Disc 2 of the original game. So let's go ahead and do the next guy, because we are going to have to do all of these if we want to complete the side quest. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be trophies associated with the card game as well. So it's just up here, if I remember, for my first playthrough. Oh yeah, this is the ventriloquist. Oh my goodness, this kid's annoying. Yeah. We're talking to a doll. Yeah, pretty much, Matthew. You're right. Quick to learn, difficult to master. So this will be our second of third, second of three, rather, that we need to beat for this Blood Servant quest. Now, if you remember, guys, we did get a new card, didn't we? The Crystalline Crab. So we can probably add this into our deck. We've currently got two of each of the starting cards, apart from one of the Magic Pot cards. You can have 15 cards in a deck. So what should we take out? I'm thinking we should probably drop the Alpha Dunk. It's great for building up points, but the fact it only kind of boosts slots on the board that are behind you makes it a little difficult to handle. So I'm going to replace it. Now, do I want to put the second one in? We actually got two of these. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to replace a Queen Bee as well. I don't use those all that often. Okay, we'll see how that works. Okay, let's go ahead and begin the match. Oh, you Blackbeard. I'll show you the mode I'm using, because I can't remember. I think it is performance mode. And it looks pretty good. I couldn't tell any difference, personally, with graphics mode, so that's why I put performance mode on. Uh, we're going to mulligan the Alpha Dunk and the Magic Pot, because we can't play those, being level 3 and level 2 cards. 
uh, until a little bit later in the game. So let's go ahead and click play. And we've got a full set of level 1 here. So we didn't start off with the soldier, which is a good starting card. Let's go ahead and just play the grasslands wolf. See what our opponent does to answer that. Oh, he does the same. A grasslands wolf. Um. Okay, we'll play the Levery card. I've not got a great selection of cards in this hand. Okay, we could play the J Unit Sweeper. Oh no, we can't because it's a level two card. Queen B maybe. Yeah, let's do that. We'll add a add a pawn to the bottom there. Thank you for the sub. Yeah, if you are new to the channel, guys, please do consider subscribing. I'm going to be streaming the heck out of this game over the coming weeks. Oh, yeah, M. I am just at the start of Chapter 2. I did skip most of Chapter 1 for the stream, as it is pretty much what people have seen with the demo. The uh, story of Nibelheim and what have you. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Right, I think we need to capture that red pawn somehow. So I'm going to use the Crystalline Crab to do that. See how it turns from red to green? That will annoy him, quite frankly. Although he could annoy us here. Yeah. Okay, he didn't do what I was thinking he was going to do. Um. Okay. Could be in potential trouble here because he's... Pretty much going to have beaten us on the bottom row there with that six card that he's played. This guy's actually a bit harder than the last one. Yeah, I had to skip the first five minutes. That was Square's uh, prerequisite for me streaming today. And then I skipped the Nibelheim flashback, which was the demo. Including the last ten minutes of it, which you probably haven't seen yet, but... Just started off in calm. Um, this is where you have to strategize now. I think we might be losing this game. See, I could play this, but he's going to capture one or two of our pawn slots if I do that. But do I really have a choice in the matter? Um, okay, I'm not going to do that for now. Let's play this. He's going to play in the top right. See what he puts down. Okay, that's good. That's why I didn't play that square. We should be able to capture both of his. So now he cannot play anything else anywhere. So we've locked him off from the board. Can we beat his score? That is the question now in order to win. Um, okay, I'm going to play this down here. Because then we can play our level 3 card. Which should boost the score of some of our other cards. Okay, I'm pretty sure we've won. Even though he's going to have defeated us on the bottom row, it's not going to be enough. Uh, we need to play level 1s only now. That's fine. Yeah, we beat him on the top and the middle, so we should be good. And now we'll skip. So we get 7 for the top, 12 for the left, and he gets 8 for the right. And we get 0 for that. So yeah, 19 is better than 8. That's our second victory. Our second game, our second victory. And we get the Cat to our card as our reward. I think there's like maybe one more card game somewhere in Calm, and that'll be it for a while for the card game. Oh, hello, Wes and Isaiah. How are you guys doing? Good to see you both. 
Okay, so now we're going to crack on for a little bit with the story, which means chatting to some of the various folks and getting introduced to different systems of the game and what have you. So if we run over to this location first, we can say hello to Aerith on the way. We'll be nice to Aerith as well, boost our relationship. Sure, let's. Yes, I remember that, Red Mario. I worked very hard in FF8 to get Lionheart on disc one, then never saw it until the end. Yeah, no, I agree, John. I don't know if you were there before I played the first game. I did tell people that my own experience with it so far is that it's not quite as fast-paced or quite as addictive as Triple Triad from FF8, but that it is leagues ahead of the card game in FF9. Yeah, this is the full game. You're hearing an echo, Wes. Okay, I'm not sure why that would be. Yeah, don't normally get an echo, do we? Hmm, weird. Okay, so there's an echo on the video game. I'm not hearing an echo in my ears, is the weird thing. Let me check something, make one change. Okay, oh thanks Draco. Okay, we'll see how we get on then. If it gets annoying, let me know, guys. And I can actually switch over back to my previous setup. The reason I've changed to a headset is because it's just a little bit more comfortable rather than having a mic in my face for streaming with. Uh, but for now, I'm going to skip the tutorial. Folios are a new progression system in Rebirth. I haven't looked into the trophies yet myself, Enor, but I can tell you now that there is a trophy for playing through the game on hard mode, I believe. And your first playthrough to get everything done, which you're going to want to do for the trophies, is going to take 90 hours. So that's pretty much going to give you an indication that, yeah, it's going to be a lengthy experience for the Platinum. Okay, so Folios, as I say... It's another form of progression, just to power up your party. If we select Cloud, for example, he currently has five skill points. It's basically a huge skill tree. Now, only part of it is available right now. You have to unlock it as you unlock party levels. So we've only got this first bit right here, which is good, so it's not overwhelming. But we can spend those five skill points right now on either of these two nodes. This one here is a synergy ability. We can activate it from combat, and if Cloud and Aerith are both in the party, then they will perform this ability together. And the same is true for this one, but this one is performed with either Cloud and Barrett or Cloud and Red 13. So let's go ahead and choose Ranged Blade, shall we? That will spend our five skill points. 
which means next time we get any skill points, we can purchase 200 HP for Cloud if we wish. Or we can purchase an Ice Attack, which is basically the Blizzard spell, but without spending MP. So it just uses the ATB gauge. And you can get these abilities for all of your party members and for all of the elements as well. No, the game's available on, fin uh, on, on PS5 only right now. Although I suspect that PC will be coming at some point, but probably not for a while. So for Barrett, we can go for a synergy with Red. In fact, I might do that. What will this unlock? Increases overcharge and a new... Oh, it's a lightning ability that doesn't require MP. Or if I go this direction... He can go for the HP boost and a fire attack. Okay, let's do that. There we go. Um, we'll go for T for next. I want to try and give him the HP boost early on if we can. So I don't know where Tifa's is actually. She hasn't got one. So increase his damage doubt. Let's just do that. I don't think so. You have to have three people in the party, Isaiah. I suppose you could kill them off, but I think they might resurrect after each fight. I'm not sure. I've not tried it. Uh, for Aerith, has she got the 200 HP boost somewhere? I think it's a blue one. No, but max MP could be pretty good for her. And finally, Red 13. Counter spin is one of his main abilities. So wild charge, a synergy skill. And we're now fully up to date with the folio levels. Yeah, you can absolutely do that, John. 100%. Next up, we're heading over to learn about weapon upgrades, I think. By the way, oh, we can't pin locations yet, but later on we can. So we'll just follow the quest objective on the map itself. Oh, that sounds awesome, Isaiah. Oh, I think you're going to absolutely love it, Soph. I really do. It's going to be right up your alley, this game is. Okay, weapon upgrades. Woohoo. I'm going to skip the tutorial again, since I've already gone through it. So if we want to set an ability, we want to head down to, we can either, we can do it from upgrade weapons, okay. We could actually level up Cloud's weapon potentially now because he's got five skill points here. Um, so if we select either max HP plus 200 or weapon ability damage plus 5%, let's do that. Yeah, but as you upgrade and change weapons, you will get new abilities. But you don't have to do it from this upgrade weapons menu. You can do it from the material and equipment menu as well. So if we do Barrett next from here. This third slot down here is for your weapon skills. So we can just switch through all the characters really quickly. Just like that. Okay, so nice and easy. Right, so we've gone through some of the tutorials. Next up, we have a promise that we made to Aerith, didn't we? To take her up the clock tower. So let's just see where that is on the map. It's just actually over by the clock tower. Go 
get a lot of happy people in calm. <laughs> you know, you can just take your time and just walk around, just taking the surroundings. There's actually a lot going on in this game that you can miss if you're not paying attention. Thank you for the sub. Yes, that's right, Blackbeard. I forgot about that, but you're right. The vendor does sell. Oh, I can't do it yet. But remind me once we've got full control of the town again after the cutscene. Yeah, we can purchase that upgrade. And we should have enough money as well. I've got 2,000 gil. And that is enough to purchase it. Because I did it on my first playthrough. Get a pretty awesome view of calm here. We get a little bit of a view of Midgar from here. Funny, isn't it? How small it looks. It is far away. So, did something happen between you and Tifa? Don't look so shocked. We're roommates, you know. She say something? Not about you two, no. Still, I can tell. I would have given anything to have a friend when I was growing up. Don't take her for granted. Yeah, things are about to kick off in ways they didn't in the original game. Hello, Dad. Oh, you're going to love this game, mate. I know you are. <laughs> Looks like Shinra have actually invaded Calm looking for us. So we've got a bit of action now to get through. Oh, I think it's been absolutely fine, Fenor. Oh, thank you, Heiser. Thank you so much. Uh, there you are. The innkeeper. Yeah, Neo, you're right. This never happened in the original. And I'm sure some people will say this is just an artificial way of expanding, you know, a portion of the original game to make Rebirth last longer. But actually, this makes total sense to me. Doesn't it make sense to you guys? After everything that Cloud and the party did in Midgar, and they destroyed Motorball and blasted themselves, you know, off the highway and into the world map, of course, Shinra are going to be looking for them. And of course, Shinra are going to be starting in the closest town to Midgar, which is Calm. So, yeah, it absolutely 100% makes sense to expand this area in Rebirth with this story plot point that Shinra 
have invaded the town in order to find us. And it kind of should have happened in the original as well. <laughs> Yeah, for now we're just following the innkeeper. He's going to help us to avoid Shinra. Okay, up and over is the name of this next part of the quest. Which seems like a bit of a risky manoeuvre when you've got all these helicopters and... It looks like, it's like the Gel, the Gel Nick or whatever it is. Do you remember from the original? That ship up there. Is that the crashed plane from Final Fantasy VII that you go exploring and all of the good stuff later on? I think it is, isn't it? Uh, no, Annika, that's Nibbleheim. No, Calm is okay. Yeah, there's the crash plane, isn't there, Fenor? Um, when Emerald Weapon becomes available, you can go exploring. You get some powerful equipment there. Pretty sure it's that. Well, it looks like we've done a good job of avoiding being caught there. Nothing inconspicuous about Cloud walking around with huge... Shinra issued Buster Sword on his back. Oh yeah, Brutona. The, yeah, you was, wasn't you? Running across the rooftops in FF9. Okay, so another gameplay mechanic that is new to Rebirth is being introduced to us here. <laughs> Again, I'll skip the tutorial if it gives us one. Yeah, a few people have said that, Annika. Yeah, I think Sony servers are going to get slammed, aren't they? <laughs> it's midnight. Okay, so we'll do some transmuting. I'm not going to go through the tutorial, though. Um, let me see if I can fix this echo that a few people are complaining about. It means I'm going to have to swap my headset around. So just bear with me, guys. One moment. <laughs> ah. 
I need to figure this out. Can you guys hear me, by the way? Hmm, <laughs> I'm not hearing anything. One sec. Ah, oh, that's better. Can you hear me and hear the game now? I've gone back to my original setup. Okay, everyone's saying yes in chat, which is obviously encouraging. <laughs> okay, hopefully then that'll be better for you guys. I would like to try and get that other setup working correctly if I could. It's just much more comfortable for me for these long streams rather than having to speak into this mic here, sitting up straight and having this tethered headphone connection. But obviously, you guys are the priority. And I don't want to be having echo throughout the whole stream if we can avoid it. Okay, that's good then. Okay, yeah, so he's given us a way out to avoid Shinra. No, he's having a bit of a hard time there, isn't he? I know how he feels. I'm recovering from a chest infection myself, and it's just like that. Um, item transmuter. This is new. So we can, at the moment, not make much, only potions, in fact. But every time we make an item for the first time, it will level up, or at least give us experience towards leveling up our item transmuter so i'm going to go ahead and make a potion here you'll see it says experience 10 that's how much it's going to give us right towards the middle of the screen you can see craftsmanship is currently level one so we have zero out of 20 experience by making this potion we now have 10 out of 20 experience right now that's all we can make but once we've made one more thing, we'll be able to level up our crafting. So we need to start hunting ingredients. But for now, we need to hustle out of calm if we can. And into the big wide world. Because Shinra have this place on lockdown. <laughs> yeah, experience is one time from that. You have to make something you haven't made before to get the experience from it. Oh, yeah, I did forget to get that, didn't I? The other sword. I've missed out on it temporarily, Blackbeard, but I will be able to get it soon. Where to now? We'll be able to come back to Calm fairly soon. 
Looks like a job. But not for a while. Not straight away, I should say. And here's a treasure chest, so we'll grab that. Some ingredients for our crafting. But we're going to be getting tons of that in a moment. So for now, we're going to say goodbye to Khan. We will be coming back. Don't worry, we'll be grabbing that sword. But we can't come back straight away because of the Shinra being here. Oh, not long to go now, Shay. So guys, welcome to the big wide world of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. In particular, to the grasslands specifically right now. Red material, it doesn't, does it? Everything we've done to it, it's still going strong. It may look that way, but in reality, it's barely hanging on. Guess I still have a lot to learn. What do you want to know? Hmm. For starters, how do we cross these planes? I honestly don't know the answer to that question yet, Isaiah. I've only played 10 hours of this game on my first playthrough. I got up to the Chapter 4 Junon area, which you may have seen in the demo as well. I guess we won't be coming back anytime soon. Guess not. Oh, it does, doesn't it, Safe? Let's go. Tomorrow, Captain. Well, actually, it comes out midnight today. Indeed, here we go. The world is our oyster, as they say. Okay, so let's go for our party setup. I'm going to have Red 13 in the party since I expect many of you want to see him in action, don't you? Uh, so to change party, we head actually not over to the party menu, which is kind of weird, but to the combat settings. Uh, and then click square for edit party. So we'll keep Red in the party. We'll say goodbye to Aerith for now. I'm going to bring Barrett in because it's always good advice to have at least one ranged party member. In on the action. Light lessons, that's amazing. Okay, yeah, we're getting some transmuting. Uh, oh, such an easy, we haven't got a chocobo yet. I was trying to summon my chocobo. We're going to get that pretty soon, though. Okay, so just to show you guys before we go any further here. This is the world map, the first part of the world map, in particular the grasslands. So here we have the marsh. You guys know about that, yes? With um, a certain snake-like creature. And over here, you can't see it, is the Chocobo farm, or the Chocobo ranch. But our first destination is over here. The orange pin the game is actually putting for us is a pin that you can control with the R3 button. So you can put these anywhere you want. Okay, and then it will track them on your map for you. So yeah, we'll just stick it over there for now, but we don't actually need it because we've already got the purple quest marker. This here, this little white um, marker is it, it, it's a point of interest that you've already been to, but eventually these will all become fast travel points. So there's one here inside Calm as well. 
Now, we can't fast travel to Karm at the moment because it's under Shinra occupation. And we did also miss the third uh, card game for that quest. So I'm going to have to go back and do that once Karm becomes available. There's so much to do in this game. It's absolutely unbelievable, okay, in terms of how much side quest content there is. For better or worse, unfortunately, I would say, perhaps my only gripe, is that it does seem the game is tuned around you doing it. So technically, it is, op uh, it is optional content. But if you miss a lot of it, you are going to be gimping yourself significantly. So if you're excited for the story and want to rush through the story, just bear that in mind. You're going to struggle if you don't do a good portion of the side quests. No. No. From what I understand, sadly, I've not been able to go back to Midgar. I know, obviously, you wouldn't be able to go into Midgar, but I did try and head back to the sort of area where Midgar is just to see it from the outside and how magnificent it would be, but I couldn't get close to it. So maybe you can later on in the game, past where I've got to, I'm not sure, but at least from what I've seen so far, the answer to that is no, you can't. So, like I say, loads of side quests, but for now, our choice is limited. We have the purple discovery place. Thank you for the sub, John. Yeah, if you're new to the channel, guys, please do consider subscribing. And note that I'm going to be streaming the heck out of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth over the coming weeks. Hope you guys will stick around with me as we try and at least master our playthrough. Whether we'll play through again for the Platinum Trophy on hard mode. I'll see what, you know, you guys want to do really once we've completed our first adventure. So the materials for the transmuting of items are scattered all over the place. Once you've unlocked Chocobo and you are mounting that and racing around the world map on a Chocobo, you can easily collect materials without having to dismount. Okay, so there might be some secret chest or something around here. If there is, I think I missed it on my first playthrough. There is an enemy skill materia, Red 13. Sorry, Red 13. Red Mario 13. Going to get you guys confused. Um, but we don't have it just yet. Ah, there's the chest. What do we have in here? A high potion. Right, there's one more chest to complete this area. So we'll see if we can find this. There it is. Nice, easy. Hunt to get us started with. And this area is now completed. Yeah, it puts a little chest on the map as well, just to show us that. So we know we've done it. Uh, Dark Swordsman, yes, we are actually going to be heading over to the Chocobo Ranch on this stream. Um, it is a little bit annoying trying to navigate on foot, so I would like to try and get our Chocobo as soon as possible. Once you've unlocked a Chocobo in a specific region, you get to keep it for that region for the rest of the game. Okay, every time you come back to this region, once you've got a Chocobo, the grasslands, we can always summon it whenever we want. Uh, right, I keep getting stopped by the stupid cliffs here. Okay, we need to head on the path. I took a bit of a detour. Probably shouldn't have, but we did get those two treasure chests for some potions, so I suppose that was worth it. Okay, we've got some enemies as well. Should we take care of these? I don't know if beta is an enemy skill, sadly. Oh, let's try some red 13 since you guys want to see this guy in action. Um, I haven't actually used a lot of Red 13, actually, on my playthrough. So, triangle to enter Vengeance mode. I think one of his abilities heals him, if I remember. Okay, let's have a look at some of his abilities. We've got Sidewinder, leaps into the air to deliver a punishing blow. Sentinel Stance, guards against attacks to increase the Vengeance gauge. And Stardust Ray, unleash a devastating attack over a wide area, but that's double ATB. 
But now we'll use Sidewinder. Nice. Thirty-five MP. No, it's not huge. Okay, Christopher, thanks for sharing. Just check there's no chest or anything up here. Yeah, no chocker buckle either, I'm afraid, Red Mario. <laughs> At least not that I'm aware of. I'll try and use Stardust Ray if I can build up the ATB enough. There we go. Oh, we can also use the quick command. Oh, I like that ability. That's nice. That is potent. Yeah, no synergy yet. Um, yeah, it's not unlocked yet for some reason. Even though we've learned some. It must come later. Oh, fantastic, Adam. Just grab some of these bits and bobs. I'm not going to do a whole lot of exploring yet until we've got access to the Chocobo. So let's head back to the main path. Let me go down from here. Yep. There are some cliffs you can't fall down. Yeah, that's very true, Kyle. You can. There are some very defensive synergies. I wonder if we can cut our way across from here. That uh, looks like from here we can. So this isn't the Chocobo Ranch that we're going to now, but it's kind of like a mini farm. So don't get confused when you see it. Chocobo Ranch will be the next destination after this one. Yeah, Synergy, you have to build them up first in battle, but I don't have any yet. So I can't show them to you. I think they unlock a little bit later. Oh, you cheeky wolf. There is a... I want to say it's a bug. Um, hopefully it will be fixed. But I've noticed when you have battles on the world map where there's a lot of terrain, like cliffs and that, enemies can run up them and you can't follow them, which is really annoying. So you kind of can get stuck. It only happens rarely. But it has happened, so I hope that's something that gets fixed quickly. How can you be so sure? Oh, no, there are enemy skills, Holly. Like any Just not the ones that Red mentioned that I've seen. While on the hunt or in defense of their territory, fiends, on the other hand, attack without reason. If they're attacking, what does it matter? It matters if your nose can discern their intent before they attack, as I gather yours can't. This is an actual farm, a cow farm, look, not a chocobo farm. And it's where we need to be right now for the quest. <laughs> You'd be the avalanche, folks. It's okay, I'm on your side. Heard you be heading my way. You're safe here, but not for long. By the sound of it, Shinra's leaving no stone unturned. Holy moly, a hundred concurrent viewers. Welcome, guys. Good to have you here for the live stream of FF7 Rebirth. Okay, so we've got our bench we can rest up on. This stuff sort of comes from Remake, although the one on the end is new. I'll show you that in a moment. We'll buy the discounted items, which was pretty much the habit I got into 
in Remake. Uh, cushions allow you to use chocobo stops or chocobo pit stops as rest spots. So they're consumable items. This one doesn't need a cushion, so we can just rest up for free. Oh yeah, the soundtrack, Captain, is phenomenal. It really is. Um, this allows us to update our folios again, like we did in Calm. Power up, get extra stats, extra abilities, extra synergies. I'm not going to do it now, because I think we need a few more points. Oh, look at Aerith being destructive. This is somebody's farm, Aerith, and you're just knocking it all down. Indeed, yo. Okay, so before we head over to the Chocobo Ranch, we're going to head over to the Swamp. It's a bit of a journey, as you can see, but we are soon going to be getting a Chocobo of our own. So let's start making our way over there. You might have to delete a game or two, John. I had to before I could install it. I had to delete Final Fantasy 16, in fact. Brace yourself. Don't overdo it. Yeah, it's like 150 gig. It's massive, this game. They kept harping on. Do you remember Square did about it being over two discs in all their marketing, two Blu-ray discs? I'm just so grateful for the fact I've got gigabit internet now. Mm. In that case, try deleting the game, John, from your home screen, you know, selecting it and then pressing delete, and then try downloading it again from scratch. But I do believe I neglected to introduce myself. The name's Bill, and you can count on me for a lift anytime. Except today, that is. Afraid the old butte's pulled up lame. Sorry about that. No biggie. We're enjoying the fresh air. Thanks, though. You, uh, know some place we can hunker down? Hmm. Hunker down, you say? <laughs> Thank you, Lights Lessons. Oh. <laughs> That's very kind of you. I'd almost forgotten what it was like to be young and in love. Y'all just head straight that away toward the swamplands. You'll find an abandoned building by the dock. <laughs> I guarantee no one will bother you there. Ah, oh, Choco Bill. Okay, so we're still going to be heading towards the swamp for reasons which I'm sure you guys know. We won't be crossing it just yet. Yeah, I still only have the original 825 gigabyte hard drive or SSD in my PS5 that it came bundled with. So I have to keep deleting games now that they're getting bigger and bigger every time I want to play a new one. Got the alpha dunks. Yeah, these are quite beastly. These are in the original location, aren't they? If we use assess, we can see their weaknesses. In this case, fire and ice. So we can yet yeah, go ahead and cast fire here. Maybe get it staggered. Cloud still has his ability where you can guard in order to counter. By the way, I just haven't used it yet.
Just taking the environment as we run through it here. There's some ruins. I wonder if we can find any treasures over there. Again, I don't want to do too much exploring just yet because it's going to be a little bit slow going on foot. Okay, yeah, want to dodge that for sure. Yes, it was, wasn't it, in the original game? Those two alpha dunks. You're absolutely right on that, Red. I can see a treasure chest. There could be equipment in these chests, which is why it's important to try and find them. Looks like, but definitely an older model. From back when they were duking it out with the Republic. Yeah, in this version of FF7, Junon used to be a republic that is now obviously taken over by Shinra. Was that the case in the original? Because I don't remember that. I'm not sure, John, if there's a reward for assessing every enemy. There could very well be. We've got some mood creatures. I don't know if they're going to be casting level 4 suicide. Hopefully they won't. Should we have a quick gander now at the item transmuter? Because we've been getting a few uh, uh, items, a few ingredients. We can now make an antidote and smelling salts. Again, I recommend you make at least one of every item because that's how you're going to level up craftsmanship. You only get experience for the first time you craft an item. So this will give us 10 experience, enough to get to level 2. And that unlocks a number of other things that we can now craft. You see how this works? But interestingly, we can now also craft some armor. Well, no, we can't because we need level 3. But this has become available for us to look at at least. So let's get some smelling salts. And a mist potion. And now we should be level 3, yep. And now we can look at accessories as well. Which requires level 4. We can't craft these yet as we still need some ingredients. So let's just keep getting experience, shall we? That's all we can do for now. I'm just going to save my game, because I haven't saved it since we started. Over an hour and 20 minutes ago now. Um, chapter 2, yeah. Okay, we've got some iron ore, which is helpful, because we need quite a bit of that to start crafting some accessories and armour. And here we are at the famous swamp in the grasslands. And we know who inhabits this swamp, don't we? A sleek saber. So I didn't need to get that weapon from Calm in the end. That's a bit of a boost for us. I need to re-equip the 200 HP, but that is a nice bit of damage increase. And an extra materia slot as well. I'm happy we found that. So, oh, we don't have the 200 HP to equip, but I could put ATB charge rate up. Yeah, I think we will. ATB is king in this game. I don't think I have any spare materia, but we'll be getting steel shortly, I think. Check now other treasures around here. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome, AK. Oh, you've had your ans question answered. I say hi. Yeah, it was level 15. Yeah. Looks like an old Republic landing. Thanks, Blackbeard, for that Before answer in chat. Make our way across. Then head on through the mines and, and keep going till we hit Junon. 
Yeah, just to clarify, guys. Why not? I'll wait till this cutscene's finished. Trust these rotting hulks. I mean, we could. Let's not. Then maybe we swim in. <laughs> this swamp is home to the deadly Midgard Swarmer. Beware. But even if you're slow, you can rent a chocobo. We'll see you safely past being nothing if not fast. So just give Phil the word and he'll pick you out. A bird! <laughs> <laughs> well, can we rent some birds? Can we? He's not going to be able to resist that charm, is he? Okay, I was going to say something for that cutscene, and I cannot for the life of me now remember what it was. So I guess I'll hopefully remember and come back to it at some point. Next destination, the Chocobo Ranch. We're going to need our own birds across the swamp. Oh yes, what I wanted to say, guys, was that... I'm only allowed to stream four hours of the game today. That was part of the requirements that Square gave me in order to get permission to stream at all. And my plan is to go for about two hours this afternoon. So that leaves us about another 30 minutes or so now, 35 minutes. But then I want to stream again a little bit later. So I don't normally do double streams in a single day. But I think this is a special event, isn't it? A special occasion. So, yeah, once we finish a little bit later today, I will be back before the end of the day for another couple of hours. Let's just check the map. We're heading over here, which is where the entrance of the Chocobo Ranch is. So, this is how much of the grasslands we've explored. This is one area, okay, of the world map. All of this here. Including up here, down here. It's a big place, as you can see. Heading over here comes into the Junon region, which we'll be doing in a couple of chapters' time. And then I guess we'll be going overseas into the Costa del Sol region, uh, region which I've not been to yet. So that will be new for me from there, from that point. Yeah, definitely Captain Morgan. It's much more open world. Okay, this is a chocobo stop. Unfortunately, it's locked off to us at the minute. I can't do anything with it. But later, we'll be able to activate these and they will become fast travel points and rest points as well. In fact, this one we can rest at right now. But we might need to use a cushion. Yes, and I don't want to do that. So remember, I purchased that cushion from the vending machine. That's what they're used for. Consumable items if you want to rest out in the world map at these Chocobo stops. Which, by the way, these Chocobo stops are everywhere. But you do need to activate them in order to use them as fast travel going forward. We'll leave those enemies for now. And yep, I can see the Chocobo Ranch. Don't worry about the fact that I'm leaving enemies. There's so much side quests and stuff we're going to be doing in this region that we're not exactly going to be underleveled, okay? Before moving on, I assure you. Here we are. So, Bill has already made his way over here. We're going to speak to him again. Pleasure to see you all again. And welcome to my humble ranch. That'll be after Rebirth, Heiser. But I will be planning on it, yes. You must have been my lucky charms. She started up right after you left. Anywho, what can I do you for? You in the market for some fine-feathered friends by any chance? Are we ever... Need him to get through the swamp lands. Then you have come to the right place. Back in the day, we had Republic fairies to get us from A to B. But now they're nothing but driftwood, sadly. We got the next best thing, though. 
Chocobos. To them, a bottomless bog's no worse than a kiddie pool. Now, ladies, you're probably wondering, what gives these birds the power to glide across swamps with ease? <laughs> Would you believe that their fluffy feathers give them the buoyancy to float while their limber legs can outrun a motorboat? Not even the dreaded Midgard Sormer, one of the fastest fiends around, can keep up with them. Oh, wow. <laughs> but you don't need convincing. You just need pointing to a hard-working chocobo, nature's two-legged limousine. So can we rent some? Sure can. My grandson Billy's in the stable over yonder. He'll help you out. Yep, so our next quest is ultimately to get a chocobo so that we can cross the swamp safely. And that's exactly what we're going to be working towards now. Before we do that, I do just want to point out there is another rest stop over here. And hopefully some cheap potions for us to purchase, which we are going to need. Well, there's a cushion, so we'll grab that. Uh, Materia-wise, we could actually get a cheap steel material. I mentioned we were going to be getting one. And there it is. There's Chakra as well. I don't think I've... Oh, no, I do already own one of those. We could actually get some accessories and armor. But we can be crafting that anyway soon, so I'm going to save some gill there. We could get a second steel material, but we'd have to pay going rates for that, so I'm not going to do that. I don't use steel all that much because it seems wrong using ATB uh, gauges on steel in this version of the game. But we'll equip it, start leveling it up. Oh, over there you can see a communications tower. Yeah, we'll be coming to that a little bit later. For now, we're going to progress with the story. Getting the chocobo unlocked is really the priority to start with. But before we do that, there might just be a couple of chests or something for us to find. I think there's something around the back of one of these buildings. Yeah, there's a chest over there. Yeah, he does a bit, doesn't he? You're right, Annika. Oh, not long to go until official release now, fear who. But yeah, the hype is real. I've got to say that. And here's Billy. It's on the side. Need some chocobos to cross the swamp. I'm sorry, Pops, but you're out of luck. Pops? Got no more birds. Last one went this morning. Could have fooled me, kid. These are spoken for. That or they're not fit for riding. But I can see you're in a bind, so I'll bump you up the list. For a price, of course. Which is? Ten grand each. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it, Ben? <laughs> Ten grand each. one other option only cost you a grand uh, is what a scoundrel might say <laughs> i wouldn't dream of distressing y'all further just so happens one of our birds ran off the other day wild thing but still a fine chocobo if you can manage to find and catch him then he's yours free of charge you sir yeah why not name's pico the hardest headed bird you'll ever meet by far. And he's the spitting image of Pops. <laughs> Pops. You can start by looking for his tracks. Find those, and you're sure to find the feet that made him. Now, wild chocobos can be a bit skittish around people. But if you play it cool and creep up real quiet like, you'll wrangle him no problem. I think we can do that. Thanks. And one last thing. 
This info comes free of charge, provided you promise to stop by our shop. Speak to Chloe back there. She'll sell you whatever you need. <laughs> Kids are born businessmen. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all can catch our runaway and get his butt back here, riding and rearing lessons are on me. Okay, so we need to speak to Chloe next to answer a question I saw in chat. On this playthrough, we're currently three hours in. On my first playthrough, I got to about ten hours before starting again for the live stream. Another chest. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, actually, Renaissance Elf, if they do that. Because they did with... Um, Crisis Core, didn't they? I believe we just found a weapon for Aerith. Yep, the Timeless Rod. So we'll throw that onto her. I'm not going to sort out her materia yet, though, as she's not in the party right now. Sorry about my brother. All he thinks about is money. Oh, no worries, Shane. His job. We understand, I suppose, but he's been a real pain about it ever since our parents left. Say, are you guys from Midgar? Yeah, the Undercity. Then, do you happen to know Chocobo Sam? Um, not very well, but... Yeah, I guess we do. Where is he? Probably the Sector 6 slums. He's a big deal in Wall. Um, why do you ask? I was thinking about reaching out. It's his fault Mom and Dad are gone, so... Chloe... That's none of these good folks' business. Yeah, Chocobo Sam was a new character in Remake, wasn't he? He wasn't in the OG. Sam's one of the biggest names in the business. If he gets wind of that story, our ranch is done for. Don't worry. Your secret's safe with us. I promise. Oh, take these greens. You can give them to Pico when you find him. They were always his favorite treat, you see. Maybe he'll come back once he's had a taste. Right. Should probably sell you stuff, huh? Billy will throw a fit if I don't at least try to get you to spend a few gil. No pressure, but if anything catches your eye. Also, if you have any golden plumes on you, I can exchange them for Chocobo gear. So be sure to hand them over if you do. Yeah, if you remember, guys, that Chocobo stop that I showed you that we couldn't activate yet. Every time you do activate those, you get these plumes that you can then trade for equipment for your Chocobo. Although from what I've seen, the equipment is purely cosmetic. Um, okay. I don't think this is a spoiler, Fenor, because this was announced even before the game came out officially by Square. I guess to temper expectations. But there is no Chocobo breeding in Rebirth. Yes, she's definitely another flower girl, isn't she, Elf? Uh, so, do we have any plumes? We don't. But we can get three pieces of equipment for our... Grasslands Chocobo, eventually. I'll need six plumes to do so. And we can purchase some other bits as well. Mostly ingredients. Which I'm not going to do because we'll be finding plenty of those. So we've got a new discovery quest. Which is to hunt down some of those plumes. And then to bring them back to Chloe. Which we'll do. Eventually. Yeah, so now we're going to be introduced to one of the systems of Rebirth. And that is every time we come to a new region, in this case the Grasslands, we need to hunt down some Chocobo tracks. Every time you come to a new region for the first time, that is what you are going to want to focus on. Find the Chocobo tracks. Once you've done that and wrangled your Chocobo, you get to keep it for that region for the rest of the game. So the exploration in that region is just going to be so much more convenient. So every time you come to a new region, find the Chocobo tracks. The regions are huge, by the way, so there's only going to be a few throughout the game. Yeah, there's no Chocobo breeding, but you can get different breeds of Chocobo with different abilities, okay? But they are region dependent. So, unless... I've only played 10 hours again on my first playthrough, but from what I've seen so far, you won't, for example, be able to have 
uh, a mountain chocobo here in the grasslands. You'll always just have the regular chocobo. But in other regions, you can. So it is region dependent. By the way, right now... Oh yeah, we can zoom out and see more of the map. So this is the grasslands. Over here is Midgar. But as I say, I've not found a way to get over there to look at it from the outside. Which I would love to be able to do. I reckon it would be epic if we can. Um, but we need to find now the Chocobo tracks. That is the priority. If we head over to the story. Yeah, follow the tracks to Pico. So where are they? There we go. You can just see them on the floor there, yeah? If Chocobo Sage is in this game, John, I haven't found him yet, but it would be much too early for me to have done so. So it's possible that the Sage is present and accounted for. But I can't confirm one way or another at this time. Bingo. Okay, here we go. So this is a now a mini game that we're going to be doing once in every region. Keep it down. When you're on the hunt, you don't want to startle your prey. Prey? You know we're not here to kill him, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Blackbeard. Now, this minigame does get harder as we progress through the regions to unlock more powerful chocobos. But for now, it's fairly easy. We just have to make sure that we wait for the chocobo to not be looking. I'm just looking at the one at the left. In fact, I don't think that will see us anyway. Yeah, no, we're good. And if you do fail, you will find that there are checkpoints anyway. See, so you won't be restarting from the beginning each time. And now what we're going to do is pick up a rock. There's Pico, who we need to capture, who we need to wrangle. We're going to throw the rock, without being seen, to t get him to turn around. So just behind him. Okay, wait for him to turn. And now we'll sneak up behind him. We've got the timer above his body, so we can see how long we've got. And just tap the triangle button, and we're done. So, the first one is nice and easy. If you do fail, again, don't worry. There are checkpoints throughout the wrangling, so you won't be starting from scratch each time. And there's our first set, or our first two, rather, uh, golden plumes. And some Geishaw greens. Similar, totally. <laughs> what does he want now? Do you think maybe I don't remember that red Mario, no. Sorry, that's all the food we had. But you know where there's more? Bill's place. Oh. <laughs> Back to the ranch it is then. Come on. Okay, yeah, so we're heading back to the ranch. I wonder if we can fast travel there yet. Nope, unfortunately, we still have to run manually. But that will be a feature that is unlocked shortly. You don't have to wait long to get that. And it's not far anyway, is it really? So we'll speak to Bill. No, not Bill. Billy. I always get them too confused. And we've done what he's asked us to do. So hopefully now he should give us our own chocobo. The one that we caught, in fact. Ah, there's our guy. <laughs> Nothing beats a 
little taste of home, now does it? Hmm. Huh. <laughs> Not so much as a feather out of place. Got one healthy bird here. Enough to ride? Sure. Though I wouldn't try till he's done eating. Once he's at his fill, though, I'm sure he'll come around to the idea, if we ask him nice. Ain't that right. I'll need to prep his gear and all that, so why don't you wait outside? Okay, now when we go outside, we're going to meet a player you may remember from Remake. Hey there. What a pleasant surprise. You do remember me, don't you? Yeah, Chadley is back, and he brings a whole load of combat assignments with him. Along with a whole bunch of material we're going to be able to craft and summons and all sorts. I knew you would. It was an absolute pleasure working with you in Midgar. Thank you again. Your invaluable intel allowed me to create so much materia. Detecting internal monologue. The hell's this <laughs> He's detecting what Cloud's thinking of him. I was created by Professor Hojo, you know. Though your thoughts could be read by any cyborg. <laughs> but, to answer your question, I took a page out of your book and skipped town. Now, the whole world's my laboratory. Speaking of which, I have a favor to ask, if it's not too much trouble. You need more battle intel. That's the Cloud I know. Always eager to get on with it. But yes, Though, I'd like you to activate some Remna Wave Towers first. They were originally constructed by the Republic of Junon, but were claimed by Shinra after the war. Since which time they've sat idle and untouched, just waiting for someone to put them to good use. I don't remember no red too long ago for me. The more my processing power will grow. As will the area I can survey. I might even be able to construct a communications network independent of Shinra. How does that sound? You'd not only be helping me, but yourselves as well. <laughs> if we find any, we'll turn them on. Wonderful. I thought you might say something like that. Let's get started then. See that tower? That's your first target. And this will activate it. Okay. As the tower is close by, allow me to accompany you. So something I do want to show you guys. I've been getting a number of questions in chat about things carrying over from Remake. So it's important that I want to address this. No, none of your characters' party or party's levels, equipment or materia or items carry over. Okay. In fact, nothing carries over from Remake. You are starting from scratch at level 15, regardless of whether or not you've played Remake. However, if you head to System, which I haven't done yet, and then go to DLC forward slash bonuses, there are a couple of materials, summoning material you can unlock under various situations. Now, if you have played Final Fantasy VII Remake, you can head here to get the Leviathan material. It doesn't say you have to have completed Remake. You only need to have played it and have some kind of save data on your PS5 that Rebirth is able to detect. So we can now go ahead and add Leviathan to our materia. Now for Ramu, you need to have played Final Fantasy VII Intermission. Okay, so this was the Yuffie DLC that was only available at least initially on PS5. And it has to be the PS5 version, of course, in order to get this summon here. So if you've only played the PS4 version of Remake, unfortunately, you won't be able to get this. But if you have saved data for Intermission, then Ramu can be yours. And then for these accessories, the Kupo Charm and the Survival Set, you need to have played through... The demo, I think it is. Yeah, I think you have to have completed or at least played the Nibelheim portion of the Rebirth demo. Okay. As long as you've done that, you'll be able to grab these accessories and those additional items as well. And in terms of carrying things across from Remake, that's all there is. 
So hopefully that will clarify that for you guys that have been asking in chat. And now we'll move back on with the game. As far as I'm aware, Isaiah, yes, that's all you'll need to do. Now, in terms of gameplay here, we have these towers. Now, these are scattered all over the map. You can tell where they are by these icons. These little yellow icons showing the tower. Once we've mastered a tower, they're very easy to do. They will then put points of interest all over the map for us to see. Okay. And they will also themselves serve as a fast travel location. So you can see there's another tower over here. These are all optional apart from this first one. Another tower here. Another towers, more towers rather, over here and over here and over here. We want to try and unlock all of these so we get the fast travel and the other points of interest and side quests that they are going to reveal to us. So as part of the story, it's going to tell us how to do the first one. So this is required. But after that, they are all optional. But yeah, if you come across them, there's no reason not to activate them. No, I don't think they're available yet, Heiser, until the launch. At least that's what it said in my email from Square. Ascertain the locations of fiends and natural resources. Okay, and here come some points of interest for us that we might want to go and explore now. After careful consideration, I have devised a new name for this type of research. I call it World Intel. I've not played before Crisis. Elf, so I'm not too sure, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some references to the compilation games. As, you know, I mean, for sure there's going to be some, but even from perhaps some more obscure references is what I mean. But you guys will have to point them out to me as well as we play through, because as I say, I've not played Dirge of Cerberus, and I've not played before Crisis. I hope you'll assist me in gathering relevant data by completing hey, Lewis. tasks on your travels. Definitely a contender, I would say, already. I the information you provide to develop new materia, quid pro quo. To summarize, I want us to become research partners. But before that, is there anything you would like to ask? I'm not going to go through all of these dialogue options. But you're obviously welcome to do so when you play. With your activation of this tower, my analysis of the grasslands has already yielded some data. Though hardly substantial, oh, no worries, it's for me to create materia. Which of these would you like? So now we get to choose a fire and ice materia, which gives us fire and blizzard in a single materia. Auto cast, which you can throw on other party members and some of their abilities can be performed even when you are not controlling them. Morph materia and auto unique ability materia. Which... Okay, auto cast has to be linked to materia for your other party members. Auto unique ability is a materia that will allow them to cast their non materia based abilities, if that makes sense. Um, so I think we can select two at the moment of these. So should we go for auto unique? Sounds pretty good. No, I remember when it came out, Isaiah, it just didn't appeal to me. Being a more action oriented game after playing Final Fantasy VII with its RPG greatness. So I skipped out on it. I never really had opportunity to go back to it since. But if they remaster it, that'll be my first time playing. And uh, maybe Morph. I don't know. Am I going to really be cast using Morph? Probably not. So let's go for Auto Cast. I wish you all the best in the long journey that lies ahead of you. And remember, you're not in this alone. Should you require assistance, just ask. Yeah, it will work, Blackbeard. So it'll just be more powerful than using a single element materia. And
and Titan becomes available. Now, in order to recruit Titan as a red materia that we can equip, we need to defeat it in battle. And let me tell you, if you try and take on Titan right now, it is going to pounce you and destroy you. I encourage you to pit your skills against this summoned entity so that I might complete its materia. Yep. So developing materia, we've seen that. Use uh, Ask about world intel just shows us those dialogue options. Doesn't actually give us anything though. And then the combat simulator, which you will remember from Remake. Obviously, we've got a whole new list of combats here. Only a few are going to be unlocked to start with. Quite a few, actually. But the big one is Titan. Now, you will get a new summon entity to battle in every new region that you go to. Well, I say that. I'm kind of making that up. I've been to two regions on my first playthrough. The Grasslands and the Junon region. And in both, I had a different summon entity. Okay, so first Titan and then another one in Junon, which I won't mention the name just yet. Um, But I don't think you're supposed to take it on right now you can see it says level sync so you're never going to be able to out level these battles but you need to nerf it first we need to explore the map and there are these special crystals we can find there's three of them throughout the grasslands that are going to nerf titan to the point where we can actually do damage to it and kill it on my first playthrough i only found one of these crystals so i weakened titan I guess by level 1. You can see here how much we can reduce its power by. I only did it by power minus 1. And that was enough for me to defeat it. So you don't have to go through all of three of these. And I'm sure some people will be able to kill it at full might. But we can give it a go. It is really, really challenging when it hasn't been nerfed. In fact, yeah, I'll show it to you guys. But it is tough. Um, let's see what happens though, shall we? Just to show you, you don't lose out by... Not winning in a combat simulator battle. It just takes you back to the menu. Deal with that. Right. Watch learn. Okay. Now we have synergy skills unlocked. You can already see Klaus has taken 50% damage out of nowhere. So first thing I'm going to do is steal skin with Barrett. Cloud is already feeling the pressure. So I'm going to switch over to him because I believe he has a cure materia. Earthen Roar, we need to get away from that because it hurts and you can't actually guard against it. So let's guard against that. Now we will cast Cure. The battle gets harder than this, okay? Do not be lulled into a false sense of security. Cloud's already dead. I do like Barrett's guard. A lot of abilities can be blocked completely. Look how much health this thing has as well. Uh, items cannot be used, so I can't bring Cloud back to life, which is kind of annoying. But as I say, there's no way I'm killing this guy anyway. Not right now anyway, not until we've weakened it. I just wanted to show you what it was all about. Okay, we can't dodge that. So let's go ahead and do that. Stardust Ray. We're almost built up for vengeance mode with Red 13. I've got no more healing now whatsoever. Can't move with Barrett. He seems to be frozen. Yeah, you guys get the idea. It's extremely difficult. Um, oh, I can't actually quit the battle. We're going to have to be destroyed. But we are going to be able to kill Titan soon. Don't worry. We've barely dented his HP either.
So looks like Red 13's about to bite the bullet. And now Barrett. Well, I almost got it staggered, but not quite. <laughs> yeah, go for it, Dark Swordsman. Take him at full strength. <laughs> okay, so that's Titan. Um, like I say, we need to unlock these power reductions in the fight first by analysing the summon crystals, which we're going to be finding across the Endless grasslands region. The simulator's greatest strength. Synergy abilities are a bit like normal abilities, Prime Lever. You have to build up Synergy Gauge in order to use them. So once I get the opportunity to, in a fight, I will show them to you. So many fascinating possibilities. But now we can start exploring. So we've got Moogle Intel, we've got Expedition Intel, we've got a fight over here, Fiend Intel. Um, another tower we can go to. We've got a coastal lockout phenomenon intel. But guys, just bear with me one second. Okay. I'm going to have to leave the stream there because I can only stream for four hours max today and I want to save some time for later. So it's currently 4.35pm here in the UK. I will be back with you at 7.30pm. So three hours from now. We're going to be streaming again. We're going to be going through a whole lot of the side quest content here in the grasslands. See how much of that we can push through. And maybe we'll leave them... Um, Venture into the marshes and take on, or at least see, the Midgar Zolom. But I really hope you guys have enjoyed this brief introduction to Rebirth this afternoon. Please subscribe to the channel if you are new. And hopefully then you'll be notified by YouTube, in theory anyway, of when the next stream is. So that is going to be this evening, 7.30pm UK time or three hours from now will be the starting time. We'll go for another couple of hours then. And then tomorrow, I'll be back for more streams. And then Friday, I'm going to stream the heck out of this game. I'm going to have to. It's a 90-hour adventure, so if we want to make any progress, we're going to have to get down and dirty with it, I think. But, folks, thank you so much to everybody that's joined us. I really, really hope you've had a good time. It's been great catching up and chatting with you all. Have a good rest. I'm going to get some dinner. And I'll see you in three hours' time if you can join us, 7.30. Take care, guys. See you then. Bye.